Hey guys, it's Matthew from guidedhacking.com and I'm here today to give you guys a little bit of an introduction on sockets and how to send information between two computers, um, basically a server and a client. A lot of people don't quite understand how important, and especially in game hacking, um, the knowledge of sockets and the communication between two computers is. Um, so today I'm here to give you guys a little bit of an introduction. Let's get started. All right, so go ahead and open up Visual Studio. I'm going to be using Visual Studio 2017 for this project. Um, we're going to be creating an empty Visual C++ project. Um, I'm just going to call this Socket Tut. Um, as far as the project's properties are concerned, um, if you're using Visual Studio 2017, it should be already set. But if you're not, go ahead and make sure your character set is set to multi-byte. All right, once you're here, just go ahead and create your uh, main file. Um, I'm just going to keep it simple and call it main.cpp. Perfect. So I'm going to go ahead and define, there's a couple of compiler flags that basically allow us to use some of the deprecated or what is what Windows considers an unsecure function. Um, and to do that, to access those, you got to define um, a couple things, if I can spell here. Uh, Winsock deprecated in the warnings, and we're also going to define um, CRT secure no warnings. Perfect. Also, I know I'm not going to really need to do any debugging, so I'm just going to set that to release mode. Um, um, we're going to have pragma comment here um, and add the proper library, um, which is going to be ws2 underscore 32.lib for winsock. And then down here, we're going to include its header file, winsock2.h. Um, I'm going to include some of the standard C um, libraries here, including stdio and stdlib. Um, and go ahead and include the windows.h header file. Uh, we're going to be doing communication today over port number 80. So I'm just going to go ahead and define that. Um, and if this isn't already a big hit for you guys, port 80 is what is uh, used by web servers. So we're going to be doing some stuff today with web servers. Um, I'm also going to create something to hold either the um, IP address or if you want to, we're going to have it so you could give it either um, like its URL or you can pass it its IP address. Um, go ahead and create your function or your main prototype here. Um, and process. Exit. No, exit success. Perfect. All right. If you guys really haven't seen exit process before, um, it's going to do something you know really similar to just returning, except as far as at the kernel level is concerned, it's. Um, a little bit more helpful to the operating system. So it's commonly good practice and I usually do it. So the first thing we're going to do is actually initialize um, the Winsock library. So we're going to need a WSA data variable. I'm just going to call it WSA data. Um, we're going to need a word, oops, a word for the DLL version. Um, so we're going to say, um, make word uh, to one perfect I really cannot spell today make word to one um, and we're gonna make an if statement say wa startup or WSA startup um, then we're gonna pass it its DLL version um, and then we're gonna pass it a reference to WSA data and this function will fail if it's any value but zero so let's go ahead and say not equal to zero. Um, I actually in here, um, I mean, you can go ahead and put like an error message, but I'm simply just going to say exit process, exit failure. For you guys, I'd recommend 
putting an actual error message but for time's sake I'm just gonna do that um, next thing we're gonna want to do is actually create the socket so I'm gonna just come and say create socket and the socket is what you can think of like a handle um, or if you're a Linux fan file descriptor um, in your standard C but um, it's uh, what, what you, sockets are used for are, is at, at a low level the communication between two different machines over a network so this will just pass us a file descriptor this function we're going to use um, to a socket that we define with you know certain parameters um, that we want to give it so that function is just going to be socket and the first thing we want to do is pass it the family af inet and that basically says hey we want to communicate over the internet um, in basic terms and then the next one is going to be sock stream this is going to basically say hey we want to stream over uh, tcp and for protocol we can just pass zero and mm, it, let's say like you you know define this function that you just want to communicate and over like a raw socket which means um like you don't want to follow any specific um, protocol um, that's above the um, data link layer of the OSI model. So um, if you guys are familiar with um, ARP, that's where you'd be able to start creating that packet. Um, you can define also like specifically tell it, even if it's a raw socket, like you still want it to be TCP. You want it to be recognized as TCP. Um, but SockStream automatically does that for us. So. Um, if sock is less than zero, then we also hit an error. So I'll go ahead and say exit process, exit oops, failure. Come on, IntelliSense. Okay, I don't know why IntelliSense decides not to work. Um, the next thing we're going to do is get uh, the server info. And um, we're going to create a structure. I'm going to go ahead. I have, I have the MSDN form on the structure pulled up. It's called hostent. Um, and as you can see here, hostent has some pretty valuable information, including, you know, its name, a list of addresses it connects to, etc. Um, if you want to go ahead and read more, you can, but we're actually only going to be using um, the address list out of this today. So let's go ahead and create that. Um, I'm going to create a hostent um, pointer to host and we're going to set this equal to get host by name and we'll pass that cc host um, and then after this I'm going to go ahead and zero out the struct um, actually no that would be stupid <laughs> I wouldn't do that um, I'm actually yeah I don't I don't I don't need to because I'm not going to be using it for um, uh, a different more advanced thing where sometimes I would zero it out before um, go ahead and just do a comparison here null pointer um, exit process exit failure perfect um, the next one uh, we're gonna want to actually define some server info so um, I have another um, thing pulled up here. So, what th this function, I mean, this struct is um, very commonly used um, in a bunch of different socket related functions. Like, you're going to see a function later connect, which is going to connect us to the server. Um, and in here, it holds its family, which is AFI net, or, you know, it's going to hold the port, it's going to hold the address bunch of stuff so we're gonna definitely need that um, and I'm gonna go ahead and create that sock header in oops, in um, and I'm just gonna call this sin and I'm actually I'm gonna zero out this one because um, we're not gonna use all of the um, the bytes in the structure so I just want to make sure and zero out the extra ones perfect um, and the first thing we're going to define is the um, the port and 
normally like if i were to pass it just you know the port value of 80 it's going to be in little endian but network by order requires it to be in um, big endian so the function h tons converts that oops i'll pass it port perfect um then we're going to want to say that the family um is afi net just like we stated in our socket function and I'm going to go ahead and use the mem copy function for um, the address. We're going to pass the address of sin, that sin adder. And this gets a little weird. I don't know why there's multiple structures inside this, but basically follow down the chain until you find s adder. Um, that's what's actually going to hold the, um, uh, the address, um, the IP address specifically. So, um, and then we can just say host. Um, the adder list and pass it the first one. Um, and then we'll just say size of sin dot sin adder dot s adder. Perfect. Um, and that should be all that we need for the server information. So the next thing we're going to do is connect to server. So I'm going to say if connect, I'm just going to take a socket descriptor. Um, we're going to pass it. If you can see here, it requires a sock adder uh, structure. So I'm going to type cast sock adder pointer and pass it a reference to sin. Perfect. And the length is going to be size of sin. Perfect. And this is also successful on um, only the val value of zero. So we're just going to want to make sure. Let's do some error checking here. Perfect. All right. Once we're connected, we can go ahead and start to uh, receive data from the server. I'm going to create actually two buffers. And a 4096. Um, and another one of 4096. I'm setting these ones pretty large. I just do that um, to prevent an accidental overflow. And then the function we're going to be using is receive uh, rec v for sort of receive abbreviated. Um, and what this is going to do is receive data from our socket uh, line by line. So um, that's why I'm creating a while here, um, and that there's like a temp and an actual buffer like for the for the final um, value. So pass it the socket descriptor, pass it um, your your character array uh, temp, and receive a maximum of 4096 bytes, and we don't need to define any extra flags. And every single time, I'm just going to concatenate um, the values um, from CZ temp onto CZ buffer. Or, yeah, CZ temp onto CZ buffer. Perfect. And once that is done. I'm just going to scroll down here. Um, we can go ahead and just print the server or the, the information that we received back um, by doing this. I assume you guys know how to use printf or if you want to use cout, that's fine. Um, I'm going to go ahead and also close socket, sock, and get char. Perfect. And this should be complete by now. Besides, um, we can now enter in a host address to test this. So I am just going to um, test this on Google. We test it on Google. And let's go ahead and build. And nothing. <laughs> so. I am an idiot and I forgot to actually send the information to the server. <laughs> so it's trying to receive something, but we did not send any information yet. So um, they, these, the servers, the web servers communicate over HTTP, um, which is a protocol above um, TCP. And there's a couple different types of requests. For example, you have a head request or a get request. Um, we're going to use the head request. And what it's going to do um, when we use this head request um, is it's going to send us back information on the server. 
Um, so we're just going to go ahead. The actual message is this. Perfect. So that's the actual information that we're going to be sending. And it's clear text, so we can send it like this. Um, then we're going to say, if not, then the function send. Pass it the socket descriptor. Pass it message. Pass it the string length of cz message. Give it zero. Um, and then, oops, I don't need to do brackets. We can just go ahead and say exit process, exit failure. Perfect. I'm just going to look over one time, make sure I didn't get any errors here. Looks good to me. I'm going to go ahead and test it. And as you can see, it worked. Um, it sent us back a bunch of information. We can see, you know, what type of server it is. Um, we can see what um, some of the information on its XSS protection. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it. And the reason I'm covering this, um, some of this network stuff here, is um, because when, you, for example, in MMO games, you see this a lot. Is um, it, it sends the the client sends its player info um, in a packet back to you know the main game server. Um, which this can be useful. Um, for example, if I set up like a proxy, we can use a salt cube, for example. When it's communicating to the server, the player's position, we should probably want it, maybe we could try attacking by just modifying the packet um, instead of infecting the actual um, game's memory. Um, with different code, we can just possibly change the packet. So I'm gonna be creating a video on doing that sometime in the future too. And for all the people that are still also interested in the PE stuff, um, the first video should be coming out soon um, for the actual main tutorial, because um, you guys saw the introduction to that um, with the, the API hooking. But um, yeah, that should be coming out soon to you guys. So I will catch you guys in a later video.